welcome to week F. I'm using some washi tape to stick the canvas down onto a board and then using these sticky dots on the back of that board so that it will stop sliding around on the table. It provides enough grip so it won't move but I can remove it if needed. See, no movement. On my palette I have black, midnight blue, burnt umber light, white, cadmium orange and naphthal pink. I'm using a combination of the white, pink and orange to base coat the flamingo. I'm mainly paying attention to the light areas and the medium tone areas at this stage, but I am also adding a little bit of texture where the wing feathers and tail feathers will be. And now it's on to the second layer where I'm doing even more texture for those wing feathers. I've now base coated the tops of the legs in the flamingo colors and the bottom of the legs in the fork colors, giving a soft gradient of these two colors in the middle. But as per usual, at least once in my videos, this doesn't matter. I'm going over it. I don't like it, the legs are too thick and I wanna repaint them thinner. The best way to do that was to give it a coat of gesso over the top and start again. With the basic fork leg shape all done, it's onto the third layer of the flamingo. Adding a little bit of that brown into the orange and pink mix for some of the lightest shadows. I wanted to do the shadows in a few different stages. Some more browny, softer, warmer shadows and then going in with the darker shadows last. But for now, it's onto some more feather details because these will be laying over the top of the shadows. And by doing multiple layers like this, it really does give a lot of 3D dimension to the bird's feathers. And now it's onto layer three or four, I don't know, I forget. Here I'm adding a lot of finer details in lighter colors and then adding an orange glaze over the top to really brighten up those tiny details. Some more of that softer shadow color and then some details on the fork legs. I wanted to do the highlights in a bright white but I ended up doing a glaze over the top because it kind of reminded me of skeleton legs and it wasn't really the look I was going for. With that all done, it's time to move on to the beak and they have such a uniquely shaped beak. It's big, it's bulky, and it has a really weird curve to it. But that just makes it fun to paint. On to the second F word today, and that's the funnel. Our flamingo has a funnel on top of his head. Because why not? Another funny thing our flamingo has is a flying fish. For those of you who have been around on my channel for a little while might recognize this flying fish. From my painting, it's all a bit cuckoo. I'm just gonna do a few little more touch-ups on the flamingo. I know it's pretty much finished, but I just wanna add a few highlights to a couple of these feathers. I kind of feel like they're getting a bit lost. And then I'll go back to the fish. I think that will do it. It's probably not that noticeable to everybody else, but it is noticeable to me. For the fish, I'm going to be adding um, a lot of yellow and white for the highlights instead of just plain white. Um, for the shadows, I'm going to mix a little bit of red with the orange and then a little bit of Van Dyke brown.
Note to self, keep the painty end of the paintbrush away from the paint on the walls. Now that I've done most of the fish, I'm gonna go over with the yellow glaze and just brighten the whole thing up. And now it's for the feathers in the funnel. I know technically there's feathers on the flamingo, so I didn't really need to add this for another F word, but it just kind of looked funky, I guess, and kind of cool. These feathers are being painted in a really simple way. I'm painting the edges and slightly into the middle with the darker color and then using a lightened version of that color to flick outwards from the center and kind of give it a soft wispy look. And that's it, they're done. The next F word is a effing French a penny. I'm saying it like this because I had a fair bit of trouble with these. I don't know why, they're so simple. But before I get into that, I'll talk you through the process of the fan. I used a combination of a medium blue and a pale blue for each of those individual bindfolds. I then added some midnight blue and black into that mix for the shadows. Back to the Frangia pennies, and I think this is actually where I went wrong. I started adding in some grey tones, and not only was it too much of a grey tone, but I also added in a couple of petals somewhere amongst the mixed. I don't even know where. You see, each Frangia penny has five petals, but somehow I've got an extra one hiding out behind two of the Frangia pennies. I thought I'd just keep working with it and maybe they can tie in as frangipanis hiding behind the other frangipanis. But it didn't work, so I go on to the F on the funnel because I seem to always forget to put the letter in each of my paintings until the very last minute. I thought of it then, so I thought, let's do it now before I forget the F. I keep working on the frangipanis, going back to putting a white glaze over the top of the gray, then realizing that doesn't look good, putting some more gray in and then softening back off with a white glaze again. At this point, I don't even know how I'm gonna save it. So I add in a few shadows. Shadows help, don't they? Shadows can hide things. Nope, not this time. So when in doubt, stick a flower on it. But we already have flowers. So this case, I'm putting some random leaves everywhere. Let's hide those mistakes help the flowers pop out and hope that it looks a little bit better in the end. I'd done a base coat on the leaves using the same green from the funnel just to lay the paint down and I already had it on my palette and didn't want to waste it. For the top coat I'm using chromium oxide green and then adding a little bit of white and yellow to that mix for the veins and the highlights on the leaves. Yep, I think the leaves saved it and no one would ever know that there was extra petals under there. Unless you're watching this video. Moving on, let's do the first scarf, the last F word in this painting. I base coated the first scarf in burnt umber light, added a little bit of white and a touch of black to the mix for the first layer of fur strokes. I'm using my filbert brush for this. For the second coat of the individual fur strokes, I'm using Titan Buff. 
with no other colours added. For the shadows on the first scarf, I've used the Burnt Umber Light with a little bit of black and fairly watered down and then using a dry brush just to blend it out. I've then used this same mix to do a few little dark spots and add a bit more dimension and interest to the fur scarf. And that's it, our F word flamingo is done. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please hit that like button and the subscribe button and don't forget that notification bell. That way you'll get notified every time I upload a new video. That's it for today's video. I will see you in the next one. Bye.